everyone, and welcome to the Total Woman Wellness Show. I am your host, Delana K. Watkins, and we are here live, tuned in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Well, let me just tell you, we have an absolutely excellent show lined up for you again today as we close out Women's History Month. And our special guest for today is Lucinda Cross. I will be bringing her on to the show shortly. I know she doesn't need that much of an introduction. I'm probably going to be just really reintroducing her to all of you out there who know anything about her Activate movement. So before I do that, I also want to make a special announcement that we are going to close out the month with also an honorary guest. This is something we've never done here on the Total Woman Wellness Show. We're going to have Kimberly Rice Ogletree come on to the show later on and share with us her journey through a recent diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, also known as MS. So she is going to be our honorary guest as we close out Women's History Month. Kimberly Rice Ogletree will share with us her diagnosis, her determination, and her journey of destiny. So look forward to that and stay tuned. But before I get started with today's show, you know, I always have some announcements, some, you know, great housekeeping news to share with you all to keep you in the loop on what is going on with Selena K. Watkins. Well, first of all, finally the time has come. I have been sharing some excellent events with you, and this Saturday I will be speaking at a Women's Work Celebration uh, Conference and Celebration that is here in my hometown of Maryland. We're going to be having uh, Shannon Henderson who will be coming up from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. She is originally here from the Maryland area and will be coming here to host that event. It is a sold-out event that I'm totally looking forward to of about 200 women who will be blessed with six different areas of mental health, uh, men, relationships, finances, of course, my area of health and wellness. So it's going to be an awesome time here in Maryland. So look forward to me talking, tweeting, and posting about a Woman's Worth conference, also known as Hashtag AllCon15 with Shannon Henderson. And then more excitement is continuing to build as we are a little over two weeks out for the Stiletto Women Business Owner Symposium DC. And that event visionary is Kim Harrison out of Dallas, Texas. She is bringing this event here to the uh, nation's capital on April the 10th, and I am one of the co-ambassadors along with Donna Smith-Bellinger out of Chicago, and we would love to have you there in the boardroom with us on April the 10th. I have a wonderful sponsor who has afforded me the opportunity to give away one ticket to a lucky woman today during the show, and I will share with you how you could get a free registration to this event. This event was last hosted in October in Chicago with Donna Smith-Bellinger being the ambassador. So I am so grateful to have the opportunity to be an ambassador for um, the event coming here in our nation's capital. If you want more information about the event, just go to stilettowbodc.eventbrite.com. And there's also a special code that you can use. And that's 241GA, that's 241GA, and that will get you 50% off of your general admission. So we are just being so generous with this event coming here because the big thing is, just like what the visionary said, is we just want women to be equipped with the tools and strategies that they need to be successful. We've been able to uh, do well with the campaign that we had, and we're going to have two women, uh, young women, that are going to have their full scholarship paid by that campaign. So we'll have two young women under the age of 21 who will be in attendance also at the symposium that will have the opportunity to be in the boardroom with us. So we're excited about that as well. And then there's two other events that we are participating in, attending, or supporting, and that is the Let's Get Serious Health, Wellness, and Fitness Expo here next Saturday. It seems like that time really flew by as well. Uh, one of the hosts here on May We Help You Radio, Cherie Cofield, she is a visionary behind this event, and this is the fifth annual, and she has over 900 guests registered already for this event. It is always a great event. I have been there since the inception, and each year it just gets better and better. So we will be there again providing health assessments, uh, blood pressure, BMI, quick mini, I call the mini health assessments on the spot. So make sure you stop by and visit 
my, uh, my table there at the expo. For more information about that, go to Let's Get Serious 2015.eventbrite.com. It is a budget friendly event for the whole family because it's free. So make sure you look for more information about that and uh, plan on attending next Saturday. And then lastly, we have the Uncuffed 24 hour Telesummit, which I am also ecstatic about participating in. Capri Smith who is also a host here on the May We Help You Radio with her Uncut Radio show um, on Saturdays, is hosting um, a 24-hour telesummit, and really it's going to be phenomenal. There are so many things that's going to be shared uh, there with that telesummit as well. It begins in May. For more information about that, you can go to caprismith.com. That's caprismith.com and her Uncuffed uh, movement. We had our very first book signing from a collaboration that we did that I was also um, grateful to be a part of, and that is the Uncuffed uh, Book of Women in Business, and that's the key to living uncuffed. Absolutely love Caprice and love that movement. So that's enough about the total woman and what we have going on. Let me just ramp back up and start the excitement building around our special guest for today. It is Lucinda Cross, none other than I like to call her the Mama Activator, founder of the Activation Movement. Uh, And she is really much, much more than that. But, you know, sometimes when you get to know people on a personal level, it just kind of takes everything away from, you know, really what they do on a day-to-day basis. And I've been in her company. I've been in her presence. I've been to her conferences, and she is just phenomenal. So regardless of what you may see on social media, what you may see in television, in any other form, this lady is just phenomenal from beginning to end. And so I don't want to waste another moment. I want to edify her before I introduce her and just say that Lucinda Cross is really the founder and creator of the Activate Movement with more than 25,000 active members spanning across the country. She is a best-selling author of her very first book, which was Corporate Mom Dropout. That was when I first heard about Lucinda and then The Road to Redemption, which talks about overcoming life detours, obstacles, and challenges. And then most recently, she did a collaborative book with several other awesome women, which I had the opportunity to be there for that, and that was The Art of Activation when they did the book signing for that in New York, also another great, great, great collaboration where she really worked with other entrepreneurs, moms, just women from all walks of life. And she's the co-owner of the Supermom Entrepreneur Conference and Expo, celebrity life coach, mentor, and then, of course, a recognized motivational speaker. She has a story of triumph, which I am going to have her share personally instead of me edifying it for you. And since her just really coming into understanding what that whole word of activation means beyond the vision, she's been featured on shows such as Bethany, the Dr. Oz, the Today Show, Ebony Magazine, Essence, uh, the list goes on. And guess what? Now she can add to that the Total Woman Wellness Show because we are grateful (laughs) to have you here. Hey, Miss Lucinda, how are you? I am I am doing I am doing well. I'm just excited for all of this awesomeness that you have going on. So yes, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I'm glad to have you here. It is I was saying as I was introducing you, I always say I'm an edified people and not, you know, kind of keep it just a little bit personal, but also let people know about what you're doing. And let me just say, of course, as you know, as I've expressed to you before, it is phenomenal because oftentimes when you meet people, you either meet them at different points in their journey. And I met Mm -hmm. you at an earlier point in your journey, maybe not have, you know, the opportunity to kind of have dialogue with you early on, but I did meet you early on in your journey. And then through the course of your journey, really have great dialogue with you. And it's always, not only is it always transparent, but it's always very uplifting as well. So having the opportunity to do that really gives you, um, you know, a different insight to someone's journey. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there so that although I read what's written on the bio or the one sheet, I always tend to personalize it if I know my guests personally. And I just want to say that about you, that you're always very authentic, 
You're very always transparent, and I like that about you. Actually, no, I love that about you, what really sets you apart from some other, you know, individuals who may be on the same journey or the same path, um, but not necessarily conveying the same type of message the way you do. So thank you for that. Wow, thank you. Thank now, you so much. Because I know you, you sure, because I know you personally. So, you know, I say personally, but, you know, I always say that if, if I've seen you or talked to you more than two times, it becomes personal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want you <laughs> to just tell the listeners a little bit about your journey and how you became passionate about your mission. So really this is your time to kind of just share with us and talk to us about Lucinda. Thank you so much for this platform and, you know, just even for this opportunity. I admire you. I, you know, I just love, and when I see you, I'm like, okay, go work out, eat right, grab the vegetables, <laughs> put the chips down, because you just look so fabulous. So that's, I just had to get that out of it. I mean, you. whatever you're doing, they need, people need to just follow that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the DVDs and the workout boot camps, girl. I'm ready for you. I'm waiting for you. So um, for me, you know, just the journey going from, I would say the whole Activate movement was birthed out of bondage, you know, where I, one, did a lot of self-sabotage, not understanding my worth, um, trying to find my identity in other individuals, what they said I was great at. And it also started just even young, you know, making the wrong decisions as um, as a teen, going to college, ending up in prison, going and then finding myself in prison and then really having the time, nothing but time really, to sit there and look at my life. And what I was able to see was some, some patterns with women, some patterns with habits, some patterns with just even our language. And I was just determined to come out and not become a statistic, determined to come out and not be just another person who has a colorful background. And so – that was my fuel for fire, to be what they said I couldn't be, to do the things they said I would not be able to because I've made a mistake. And so the whole Activate movement is about just speaking your truth and standing in your power, not so much overcoming your fears, but understanding that those things that you're afraid of, those things that you um, run away from, those are the things that will bless you at the end of the day. And so for me, uh, my my challenges, my struggles, my even my fears, in embracing them. It's okay that you're feeling this way. Will give you that activation and that fuel to just do what you need to do because you know what it's like being in rock bottom. You know what it's like being in a bad relationship. So it's really cutting the patterns, cutting the nonsense. Stop making the excuses and just do what we need to do. Stop my my, my phrase. You know, don't procrastinate. Activate. <laughs> And that I love, the don't procrastinate, activate. And I think all of us need to hear that. You talked about just now in your introduction about how you look for approval in others. And I think now more so than ever before because of the different mediums that we have to communicate and to talk to others and to see what other people are doing or not doing, it's it's pushing that up top of mind, to be honest with you, because I think that with, um, Facebook and, you know, just all the other mm-hmm. Twitter and just other ways in which we've been able to kind of take a sneak peek in others' lives, mm-hmm. that sometimes can really can do one of two things. It can either motivate you to know that what you're thinking about doing is possible because you see someone else doing it, or it can allow those who may not have that self-esteem or that self, you know, kind of um, worth to kind of shrink down when we see that Mm -hmm. others are achieving things that we can only hope to accomplish. And so when I see what you're doing and I see how, again, transparent you're being about your journey, because some people, and I know that there's women out there who may have been in compromising um, positions, may have, you know, even been in prison, may have, you know, a criminal record, whatever the case may be, oftentimes we look at those types of things as an automatic, you know, disclaimer Mm -hmm. for us. Like I could never become that. I could never do this or, you know, this would never be possible for my life. So when I see people like yourself bearing it all, if you will, to say, absolutely you can. I made a mistake. This is what I did. And this was uh, where it um, landed me, and because of that, I rose like the phoenix, and now I'm doing this, <laughs> or I'm, you know, <laughs> you know, being afforded this opportunity. I, I, seriously, because I think mm-hmm. that 
you know, at any given moment, there are times when, you know, I might not be on social media for like 24, 48 hours and I'll get on and then suddenly there's like a flurry of, you know, this one doing that or that one doing this. And I'm like, sometimes there's some days where you just want to turn it all off because it's just too much. You want Mm -hmm. to celebrate others and you want to be able to, you know, say you're doing an excellent job, you're doing a great job. But by the same token, what I feel, and stop me if I'm wrong, interject, you know how I am, this is the girlfriend mm-hmm. talk. People, mm-hmm. people get caught up in the hype. They really do. And what, we, <laughs> what we're not doing is yes. we're not, seriously, we become Facebook rock stars, Twitter, you know, misnomers. We, we get so caught up in that that we, in a moment, if I was to take a poll and say, you know, to, I could pick five people right now that's streaming on my timeline and say, have you stopped to see what your vision is? Have you been able to smell, taste, hear, and know your vision of what your life is. Now, how much of that have you put into work today? How much of that are you activating? And pretty mm-hmm. much we would get a low percentage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. And, and, you, and you, mean, you, you, go ahead, I'm sorry. You know, I was going to say, as you travel the country, is that what you're finding? Tell me really what you're seeing with, you know, people that are out there for the most part. It's, it's it's to the point where it's pretty sad because you don't know whether you should celebrate with a person because a lot of things are not real, you know. So people are they putting up this facade, and so if I'm congratulating you, I'm congratulating you more into the falsehood and the facade of what's really not happening in your life. For me, it, it I always try to when I post, you know, I always try to educate or inspire or always leave a little. I, always leave a little snippet of a mm-hmm. tip in there, you know, so that people, mm-hmm. it's not so much, because what happens is it's all about you. And so I want people to say, oh, shoot, she's right. I, I did want to, like, I, I did a post today and I said, you know what, I'm getting ready to go to Bahamas. I'm taking you with me. Follow me or hashtag um, activate Bahamas. But then the message is, because a lot of people say, oh, well, my business is going to the nation. My ministry is going to the nations. I'm international. They have it on their, their vision board. But you haven't taken the first step to get your passport. Mm-hmm. There's a problem here. Yep. And so for me, uh-huh. you do see a lot of this um, hype. And you don't know what to believe because those who are really doing it are doing it behind the scenes and their actions are speaking louder than their posts. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I want my actions to speak louder. When people start shouting, shouting out what you're doing more than you do, now that's a, that's when you're cooking. You know, you, you'll see, you, you look at the people who are making an impact. They don't, they'll share, they share little, but their actions is a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot. And so even if they're posting their actions, it's still where you're like, mm, let me get on my game. But for me, I, yes. I fell into the facade at the at, in the beginning because I'm thinking that these people are doing what they're saying and their life is oh so grand. And I refuse to be a, a public a success and a private failure. So for me, I have to make sure what's going on on the back end is right. Mind, body, soul, mentally, hubby's good. Kids are great as much as they possibly can can be. And, you know, then let's go out and try to save the world. You know, but um, it's absolutely. It's, 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 you better speak it. I am. <laughs> I'm over here nodding my head because you're so, so right. Likes don't determine, you know, retweets and favors and all of that repost. None of that really should guide your vision. None of that should solidify, co-sign anything that you're doing. It, like you said, it's okay to leave, and I tend to do that too. I just leave little droplets, little nuggets. When meanwhile, mm-hmm. behind mm-hmm. the scenes, everything that you should be doing is really what should matter. And then you can share that and, and really yell it from the rooftops and share it with the masses when you're ready to shift live transform Mm -hmm. and really make moves but to kind of get a bunch of congratulatory things i really don't think that that's what our vision should be unless that's what you have on your vision board and you're absolutely right and i put this on my notes because i saw your post just as i was going live and you had put out there that vision and preparation are best friends and i put that down as like yes tweetable moment vision (laughs) and preparation are best friends because I believe in that. Short things like that people can remember because you can have a pretty vision board, and I said this on um, yesterday, but what are you doing? Do you know what to do with it next? You know, what? so what you cut, you paste towards reaching that particular vision that you put on the vision board. And the other thing that we'll talk about and we'll really delve into after the commercial break um, is that 
people don't realize your vision board isn't just about cutting and pasting. pasting. It's really about tapping into all of your senses, your sense of sight, your sense of smell, your sense of hearing, your sense of talking, tasting, and all of that, like pouring into you, all of that work goes into manifestation and activation, Mm -hmm. period. And that's the part that people don't get. That's the work that most of us don't want to do. Um, (laughs) And so (laughs) you, I know you're just like itching to delve into that. So I'm going to, we're going to talk about, um, before. all right, let's just prep this before we go to, to commercial break. Let's prep and talk about the power of having a vision. Then when we come back, we'll talk about what truly goes into um, uh, creating a vision board. So give us your um, opinion and what you teach and talk about when you talk about having a vision. So it's all it, it's all about clarity. It's all it's all about what is mm-hmm. your values, your values, your morals, and what where do you see yourself? Who do you see yourself becoming? That's the start off. That's the foundation. Um, not that the the glitter glue and the the wonderful words from essence, <laughs> but it's it's where do you see yourself and can you can you reach even further? But what's important to you? Your values. That's mm-hmm. that's the key piece mm-hmm. in term in in any vision board process um, is the values. And that's so important. And I, I put that down there before you even said it. I had put clarity off to the side because again. Like you said, it is not just a visual, and like I preface this by saying that it does involve all your senses, ladies. It really absolutely does involve all your senses when you are truly creating that vision board, that visualization um, that you're going to look at because it really is just it's a tool to help guide you, a tool to kind of keep you on track as you go through, you know, doing things to reach those particular um, goals that you have on your vision board. Then you said your values. Your values, that's another thing because, again, as we just spent the last couple minutes talking about, we can get sidetracked in Mm -hmm. our values and we can begin to wax and wane when we see other people doing either similar things that we um, aspire to do (laughs) or (laughs) when we see them. (laughs) Tell the truth. Come on now. Tell the truth. Yes. Tell them the truth. (laughs) It is ladies. Stay committed and stay true to what your values are. Stay true to what it is that you have identified. God has placed those particular visions, those particular passions, and those particular things that he has predestined you to do, not someone else's vision or, you know, what they're accomplishing, things that you say, oh, that looks like something I could do, or, oh, I thought about doing that. Maybe that's not your God-given gift, your God-given talent, or your God-given treasure to even Um, do that. Sit with it for a minute. Think about it. Take it in prayer. You know, I always say I write down things so that, again, that just like a vision board, when you think about it, you write it, you see it, you say it, that's three or four different times that you're able to communicate about that particular thing. And always, always pray about it. Always pray. And then don't look to man for the answer because, you know, we're always quick to do that. Make sure that you're writing and you're sitting and you're praying and you're thinking about that thing. You know, we're so quick and, again, with all these different things vying for our attention with, you know, social media and music and, you know, just other people and glitz and glam, we get caught up in the shiny, blingy syndrome where we just want to follow that that thing that we think is our path. And oftentimes we'll look back and say, well, damn, dang it. Come on, Lucinda. You know I don't stand the wrong path because that girl over there did that, you know. <laughs> so I am trying my best. <laughs> You mean I wasn't supposed to go pursue that? You mean to tell me I wasn't supposed to do that? You know, and this is what we find ourselves doing. And so I want, when we come back from commercial break, I want us to really talk about, because, again, in honor of Women's History Month, the women that went before us had a lot more things to deal with, a lot more battles to fight, a lot more things to overcome than we did. So we are what I call the legacy builders, the legacy creators for our daughters. They have so many things that are really pulling and, you know, buying for their attention and time that we didn't um, need to do. 
And so we need to be the forefront of that, and we need to be clear in that so that we can make certain that the stones that we're laying for them, the shoulders that we're building for them to stand on are the right ones. So when we come back from commercial break, I want us to talk and really delve into that a little bit more. Now, ladies, going into our physically fit commercial break, we're going to do planks. That's right. We're going to do a plank times 15 seconds, longer if you can. And the reason why I chose a plank, and you know here on the Total Woman Wellness Show, we're always doing something that really connects to a meaning, is when you're doing a plank, you have to visualize yourself being somewhere else, doing something else besides holding up your body and engaging all of your muscles. That's what we do here on the Total Woman Wellness Show. So there is a reason why you are planking today. So do a plank times 15 seconds at a minimum, longer if you can stand it. And I'll see you back here in a moment. Hey, Chef Jovi here of the Eat Experience Radio Show. Join me 10 a.m. every Thursday to explore recipes, best restaurants, and food spots in and around the country. I look forward to receiving your comments, so follow us on Spreaker.com to tune into the show. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And search MWHY Radio to join me every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, for the Eat Experience Radio Show. And remember to share your Eat Experience. Hello, I'm Sherelle of Fit and Flow Yoga Radio. Wake up with me every Friday at 6 a.m. and have a wonderful yoga experience. We'll explore meditation and discuss how various yoga postures can help relieve your everyday stress. We'll also make the connection between our faith and wellness. Follow us on Spreaker.com to tune into the show. That's Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And also search MWHY Radio to join me every Friday at 6 a.m. for Fit and Flow Yoga Radio with Sherelle. And until next time, surrender to your strength and always embrace your flow. I'm Tanya Free. When asked how to offset the influence of big money in politics, President Obama suggested it's time to make voting a requirement. The president went on to say it would be transformative if everybody voted. That would counteract money more than anything. At least 26 countries reportedly have compulsory voting. What's your take? Is mandatory voting a good idea in America? The Tanya Free and Friends Talk Show, your destination for the best in social and political straight talk. Wednesdays at 2 p.m., streaming live on TanyaFree.com and BlackTalkRadioNetwork.com. Join the conversation Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Hi, this is Benita with Off the Vine. Join us on Fridays at 3 o'clock for fun talk about wine. This season, I'm going to put this little sommelier certification to work as we expand the conversation to talk about beer and spirits, too. Meet more exciting special guests, and you never know just who may show up at the studio. Off the Vine with Benita on the May We Help You Radio Network, giving you something to whine about. Hello, and welcome back to the Total Woman Wellness Show. I am your host, Elena K. Watkins, and you are tuned in here today for today's segment on creating your vision and activating with our special guest, Lucinda Cross. But before I bring her back on, we have Tiffany Mansfield of Curvy Girl World, who's here to share our nutrition fit tip for the week. Hey there, Miss Tiffany. Good afternoon. I am so excited to hear about visualizing and putting plans into action today. This is awesome stuff. Last week, I, when I visit you ladies, we talked about taking inventory of our spice cabinets and kind of trying to get a hold of how much sodium we were taking in. This week, since we're talking about visualization, I want to expand that thought into moving around the kitchen. I know a lot of us multitask and do several different things in the kitchen. I know that I've cleared off everything and had my kitchen table into an, a painting area. I know with kids, sometimes with the homework, we'll sit in the kitchen with the laptop, sometimes watch TV. But in order to tie this all into creating healthy habits, we can make sure that our kitchen is clean. And I don't mean in the sense of 
cleaning crumbs off the countertops. Instead, let's think about <laughs> having a clear vision, a space where we can sit and not only eat, but be mindful of how everything's organized within. One of the things I like to do, I've shared previously, is on the countertops, I like to keep a nice uh, a nice bowl with fresh apples inside. So that way when I'm on the go or if, I, if I'm working on a project in the kitchen, I can have a quick grab-and-go snack. Um, one other thing that I have is I'm a Costco shopper. So when I buy things in bulk, especially if I have house guests or any kids around, I'll, I'll pick up cookies. And what, what I realized is when you buy in bulk, there's no division line or portion size. The serving size that's on the back of the label <laughs> totally goes out the window. And I'm pretty sure yes. I'm not the only one there. <laughs> but no. one of the things I like to do is this is a trick that I have learned a couple of weeks ago is I'll take um, the cookies and as soon as I get the package, I'll open it up and partition the servings down into little either baggies or um, maybe a, a, a saran wrapper or something of the sort. That way I'll have portion servings. I won't have to go reach into the big container and lose count over how many I'm having at one given time. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who does that. Not. <laughs> no. <laughs> but also... Um, even when we have family-style dinners and I pick up maybe a cake or a pie, one thing that I just learned to do also is to partition and portion slices already. Have them pre-sliced so that way I don't have to worry about my eyes mm-hmm. being bigger than my belly and cutting out a big hunk. <laughs> and oh these goodness, are just yes. simple ways to scale back your calorie intake, especially when it comes to the sugar because that sticks with us the most. Absolutely. And you know, no, ma'am, you are not the only one because that's what I have to do. I do the the bowl with the fruit. That's one. That's one visualization, visualization that I do because it's an mm-hmm. easy reminder. It's an easy grab and the kids will do it as well because not only is it there and it's easy, but they see you do it. And then as yes. far as any other um, and breaking down those portions, when I do buy stuff in bulk, it works. I'm able to just kind of grab it rather than saying, oh, I'm only going to have, you know, one cookie or two cookies or whatever. It's already broken down to where I'm allowing myself just the two or whatever, um, or just the slice or half a slice or part of it. So visualization, making it easy, already, um, you know, pre-portioned out your portion control of different foods that may be bought in bulk is another way to really cut down on, um, you know, again, unnecessary eating and unnecessary calories. So those were all good tips. Thank you, Miss Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you. And ladies, you can reach me on online, follow me on Twitter or on Instagram at Curvy Girl World. And on Facebook, I am Tiffany Mansfield. Thank you, and I'll see you here again on the Total Woman Wellness Show for our nutrition fit tip. I appreciate you. All right, so now let's bring back on our special guest, Miss Lucinda Cross. I bet Lucinda said, now I tuned into this radio show. I've gotten some physically fit commercial breaks with the planks. Now y'all talking about visualizing food and all this kind of good stuff. We cover the gamut here on the Total Woman Wellness Show. So before we went off on commercial break, Lucinda, we were talking about um, not only the importance of having a vision, the power of having a vision, but also about what needs to go into creating a vision board, that it is more than just cutting and pasting, that it really involves all of your senses, that you have to um, identify your values, have clarity, and all of that good stuff. So if you're just joining us, that's what you missed during the first half of the show. Now we're going to really delve into, as I was saying before, Women's History Month, because it's really a good time for us to explore the past as we create a future. So, Lucinda, Miss Activate, what <laughs> advice do you have for women that really want to prosper and leave a positive legacy filled with purpose? Um, as they're creating their vision board. Because I think oftentimes when we really pour into our vision board, sometimes we think about, like, different 
things that we want to experience um, in that year. But I really want us to expand it to be more than that. Like think big, think global, think, um, you know, on the lines of we want to be in history books. We want to be like the women who, um, you know, came before us, who when we talk about Women's History Month that we, when we Google it, those names pop up. So what should they be striving for? What are some advice that you have for, you know, women that are listening to the show today to really get them to think just beyond the, you know, pacing the car or the house or the those type of things on their vision board? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but, you mm-hmm. know, just kind of really expand our vision. I would say that, you know, to really ask, it's always in the questions. The questions that you ask are so important. They're probably more important than the answers that we receive. But the question of, you know, why why do you desire these things? What what does that vision look like? And mm-hmm. so um, why do you want this vision? Who is it going to help? You know, what, what kind of impact is it going to leave in your family? What kind of impact is it going to make on your portion of the world? And this way you're able to reach a lot higher than what you see because what we see is just surface mm-hmm. level. And we some some people's vision is just as from – from their house to the front yard, you know, realistically. Some people can't see past that. Yeah. And so the vision allows you to look and say, you know what, I do want to place an impact on the world. I do see myself as the um, the, the the modern-day Harriet Tubman. So that means that you have to be willing to put in the work. And so it's just not having um, a big vision of where you see yourself being a history maker, a change agent, a trailblazer, all of these wonderful titles that uh, we have, but it's the work. Are you willing to do the work? What haven't you done in the past years that's going to make this vision differently? Are you willing to do whatever it takes, even when it looks like um, – you 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 don't see the sun in the storm. You don't see the the, the finances. Um, you don't see getting out of debt happening. Mm. You know you just. Mm. You, but it's all part of the preparation. It's all part of being a um, the training ground. I call it. So the vision board is really crafting out and saying, you know what, I'm ready for training, and I'm ready for training for what to my vision will be. You know that manifestation because you have to be ready for it when it comes. A lot of people say, you know, well, hey, you know, well. Essence was on my vision board. You know, I want to be in Essence, but have you done the research to see what kind of woman Essence features? You know, it's, maybe that's mm-hmm. not your magazine. Maybe there's, you know, mm-hmm. hundreds of fit magazines out there that you can place an impact on people who don't know how to take care of themselves and, and wellness-wise, physically fit. They don't know what to eat. And so I, I love how you, you're in your niche, so I know what to go to you for, and you can place your impact and say, you know what, Lucinda, my goal is to change 10,000 people to be uh, to live a healthy and wellness lifestyle. That's that's crystal clear. And so that can stretch as far as you can even imagine, you know. And so it's all about getting clear and asking yourself the right questions. What it is? What is it that I see for myself? What is it that I see for my vision? Matter of fact, what does what did God? What am I here to do? You know, sometimes it's but just yes. that one question. God, what do you want mm-hmm. me to do? Because it's it's nice that I'm putting together this stuff and putting together this plan, but really, what do you want me to do? I'm ready. I'm I'm ready, mm-hmm. and I'm showing up. And so that's what my days look like, even. As I craft out my vision board, I tell God, hey, God, I'm ready, I'm willing, and I'm able. You know, I'm ready for training. I'm ready to be the soldier on the ground. I'm ready to be placed into, to to be that general for my purpose. And so help me and direct me, and I'll do what you say. I'll go where you tell me to go. I'll be scared, but I'm going to do it. And a lot of people are not willing to do it. That's it, and you said so much just in that response, and it, it was exactly what I was looking for, and that is the question. Again, don't just go straight to creating the visual part. You have to sit with the questions of why, who am I doing this for, and who will it help, and, you know, what is it? You have to sit with those questions first. Let it marinate. That's where the true work comes in, because I even wrote that down. Where does the real work happen when creating a vision board, and you pretty much answered it. It happens before you even bring out the scissors and the glue. It happens long before that, and you Absolutely. have to sit with 
again, like you said, asking God, what is it that I'm supposed to do? Because if none of that lines up with what you so creatively put on that board, it will never come to pass. It will never manifest. And that old good old activation, that will never happen either. (laughs) It just won't happen because it's not lined up that way. And that is where we, again, have been scared, I feel. Maybe that's the wrong word to say scared. I won't say that we're scared to do the work. I'll say that we are misinformed or misdirected um, Mm. to do the work because it's so easy for us to see that other people are doing this or other people have done that. And I've found that, you know, like we were saying before, we spent time talking about this, that we can say, oh, I can do that, or she can do it, I can do that. You know, <laughs> and so it's become so much easier for us to say that. You know, I remember growing up as a young kid, we would say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe she did that. And we would just honor and bask in that. I don't mm-hmm. think that there are certain things that were done by another young girl that I would even remotely think, well, I could do it too, you know, just because. And so it just seems like there's been a shift in the way that we think now that we, not knowing her backstory, not knowing that, you know, she may have had training in that area or her parents have, you know, hired a private coach for her to be able to tumble or flip or do whatever she Mm -hmm. did, you know, that I admired. Again, not knowing her story, only what I saw did I then say, oh, my goodness, you know, I would just kind of congratulate her or just say or honor her in being able to have the ability to. Nowadays, I really find that it's so much easier. We will do it with a flip of the switch. If someone hits post, send, tweet, or like, and we see that they've been able to do it, not knowing the backstory that they have spent months and sometimes years preparing for that moment, we will automatically think, that it was destined for us, and that is what we are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Ladies, mm-hmm. it is not so. You have <laughs> to really sit and spend the time. Honestly, my God, like you said, Lucinda, ask yourself the hard questions. Why am I certain that I'm doing this for me? Who? Who will it help? And then how? How will I reach this goal? How will I obtain that which I see in the vision for myself or, or accomplishing. Do all of that work before you cut and paste. You know, you talked about essence, how you said, you know, you put on your vision board that you wanted to be an essence magazine. You didn't just say, oh, I like essence. I've been reading it since I was a little girl. I think I want to be in the magazine. No, you did the work to say, okay, these are the type of women. These are the type of stories. This is what is important to them. This is what gets covered. You know, whatever type of research that was necessary to find out is what I'm interested in, is what I'm doing, what they're looking for. Is it capable? Am I capable of being a feature in Essence Magazine. You did the work. You just didn't, by osmosis, appear in Essence Magazine, people. You know, you have to make sure that you're doing (laughs) the work. And so that's what I want. That's what I want to stress because, you know, we can get caught up. And you all know here on the Total Woman Wellness Show, I don't feed you fluff and I don't guide you in the wrong direction. It is truly about you making certain that you're listening to what we're saying, that you're hearing, and that you're implementing, you know, all of the greatness that we're sharing with you today on the show. If you're listening in and you have a question or a comment, just press 1. If you're listening to us on um, Blog Talk Radio, there's a chat area. You can chat with the producer um, to call in. It's 646-652-2512. And Lucinda, the activator, and myself, we will be happy to chat with you about your vision, being able to create a clear vision that aligns with your values so that you can activate when it's your time. So we're going to go to our last commercial break, and then when we come back, Lucinda, I'm going to have you share just three or four things that the ladies that are listening to the show can kind of do to go deeper um, and be able to create a vision board, because you can always alter your vision board. You can do an update. I always do a halfway through the year update on my vision board anyway. Um, things shift, things change, something look clearer than it did, you know, uh, six months before that. So, yes, you can absolutely. We are um, through the first quarter of the year, and so your vision board might need an upgrade or update. So when we come back, Lucinda is going to share with us three or four things that you can do today that will help you to really dig deeper Make sure that what you have on your vision board is truly your vision. So for our next Physically Fit commercial break, 
We're going to get back down on the ground. That's right, ladies. We're going to do some mountain climbers times 10. So you're going to get into your plank position, and you're going to do mountain climbers. That's just bringing your legs, uh, up, your knees up to your chest uh, times 10 for two sets. That's going to be a total of 20 mountain climbers. And I'll see you back here on the other side of the commercial break as we close out with our special guest, Lucinda Cross. If you're the parent of a child with behavioral challenges that has been suspended, expelled, or just not able to make it in a traditional school setting, there is an alternative. Call the Metropolitan Day School today. Licensed and accredited grades K-12, through call 804-321-2595. Financial assistance and after-school programs are available. Let's turn this school year around right now at the Metropolitan Day School where Eagles soar. Call Ms. Thomas today, 804-321-2595. This week on the Tanya Free and Friends talk show, honor student beaten by police at UVA, a Mississippi hanging and whites only science in Texas. Racism is alive and well in America. Also, our all-female panel will take a look at the images of women in media. What messages are we sending to our girls? We will take a look at the labeling of black women and hypersexism in 2015. What's your take? Let's talk about it this Wednesday on the Tanya Free and Friends talk show and 24-7 on TanyaFree.com. Until next time, be free. And remember to live life with a purpose. The Tanya Free and Friends Talk Show, your destination for the best in social and political straight talk, Wednesdays at 2 p.m., streaming live on TanyaFree.com and BlackTalkRadioNetwork.com. Join the conversation Wednesdays at 2 p.m. The Queen Esther Radio Show is live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join me, Jessica Taylor. And me, Jason Mosley, to be entertained by authors, artists, and spiritual leaders. We look forward to being a blessing in your life every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Only on the MWHY Radio Network. Hi, my name is Leticia M., owner of May We Help You Network. I want to thank you for joining us and enjoying our host here on MWHY Radio Network. Please visit us online at MWHYradio.com and like us on Facebook.com forward slash MWHYradio. Tune in to learn more about our hosts and upcoming contests and our TV programming that will be coming to you soon. MWHY Radio, bringing together business, community, and you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Total Woman Wellness Show. I am your host, Elena K. Watkins, and I tell you what, if you are just tuning in, you have missed a phenomenal show with my special guest today, Miss Lucinda Cross, the activator. We have just been truly breaking it down and being transparent, sharing such great information about the importance of your vision, not just creating those beautiful vision boards that we can oftentimes get caught up in the cutting and pasting process. We have really been delving into the work that goes into those vision boards in order for them to manifest and visual and to, um, I'm sorry, manifest and come to pass through your activation and the work that you do behind the scenes. So I have asked Lucinda to share with us some of her little activate nuggets with our <laughs> lovely audience. So Miss Lucinda, <laughs> drop some nuggets on us. Drop some of them little activate nuggets on what we need to do for our vision boards. <laughs> So the, that's the thing. The thing is we need to get into the action mode. And so I would say that focus on your priorities. Focus on waking up, feeling productive and successful every single day as much as you possibly can. That alters the energy. That alters the focus. That even alters your, per, your perception for the day. So if you have your vision board created, 
look at that every single day and tackle and figure out which one you're going to work on and tackle for the rest of the week. Um, before you go to bed, take inventory. I I love to do like a gratitude list. Mm-hmm. And I say what I'm grateful for. I also check off the things that I've completed and then make a list of some of the things that I need to do for the next day moving forward. Waking back up once again, saying my prayers, being grateful, looking at the vision board, and going right back at it again. It's all about waking up feeling as if you're already in that position. I wake up and I feel like I'm already on my morning show, and I'm like, hey, look, and it's just me and my kids going crazy, and my husband looking at me like, oh, gosh, here she goes again. (laughs) But I wake up feeling, (laughs) I wake up in the who I'm becoming. You know, I wake up in that becoming moment every single day, and it feels good because it allows me to push past any obstacles or any um, anything that life has thrown my way, I'm able to focus on the thing that brings me joy. So wake up productive is my main tip. I like that. And, you know, I wrote down pretty much all the tips. You said wake up productive. That is so, so true. Wake up productive and centered. And, you know, if you're a meditation, you know, a person that likes to meditate or even if you're thinking about learning how to meditate, just begin with that. And then you talked about action, action, which alters your energy. Ladies, you have to stay motivated. The person next to you, the person who's also on this show listening to, you know, what we're saying will feel differently about how they activate and what they're going to do, their action, and that is certainly not going to spill over into you. You have to kind of create that energy around what you're doing. There are times when our energy levels may wax and wane, you know, our interest around certain things may wax and wane, but you have to stay, like she said, look at it daily. Stay motivated by the vision board that you created. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. It is a constant visual reminder of what it is that you want to accomplish. And then lastly, the gratitude list. I think that that is another important part of it because it can't be all about us. We have to make sure that we're showing gratitude about the things that we have experienced, what we're seeing, what we're doing, and then develop that pay-it-forward mindset also. That's what helps you to become a total woman, mind, body, and spirit. So, Lucinda, you know this hour just went by too fast for me, honey, and you know (laughs) <laughs> that I want to keep you on here long because you know there's so much more that we could, like, delve into. But I think we've given the ladies that are listening, I, I'm sure, if not what they needed to create a vision board if they haven't already, then another way to look at their current vision board, another way to update it or upgrade it if you need to, if you created that vision board without the tools of the, the questions that we shared, without the deep dive into the who, what, why, and how, then do that, and then go back and upgrade that. I know yes. we shared that with you. I know we've given you a different way to look at it. So before I let you go, I want you to tell us what the Activate Mama movement is up to now. I already <laughs> know I saw about the passport, Thomas, vision and preparation, being best friends. So drop it on us. Tell us what is going on in the Activate camp. So we are gearing up, of course, for the main event in September, the Activate Conference 2K15, 2015, which will be in Atlanta, three days of activation. It's going to be a lot, lot better. We're not focused on getting bigger We're just because we're still a baby, three years, but we're focused <laughs> on getting better and just providing yes. more of an experience, more mind-blowing, and every year is something different. So that will be, uh, we'll have information on that at activatingamerica.com, connecting with me, finding out where I'm speaking at, the vision board um, tour, which I I haven't officially said it was a tour, but the vision board, the Activate Your Vision board tour is just taking its its own um, path, and I'm just following suit that you can find more information about that at lucindacross.com. Connect with me on any social site with Lucinda Cross. And I, and I just look forward to connecting with them. So if they can um, definitely go to my website, activatingamerica.com, for the conference, and I hope to see them soon. Absolutely. Activate, activate. And, yes, <laughs> the three-day activate movement. You know, it's on my when, Do you know the weekends yet in September that you're going to be in yes. Atlanta? Yes, Which September week? 18th to the 20th. 18th. September 18th to the okay. 20th will be at Atlanta in the Marriott and just turn okay. it all the way up. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, you know I already had that on my calendar from the Activate New York 
So, ladies, go to activatingamerica.com, bookmark it, save that as your uh, uh, HTML so that you can check back often for information about the three-day Activate movement in Atlanta, September 18th through the 20th. Lucinda Cross, I appreciate you. I appreciate what Thank you're doing. You. I love you. Thank you. Hugs all, all the way you to too. New York. Hugs all the way to New York. So we shall talk soon. I appreciate it. All right. All right. You. So, ladies, stay tuned for our extended honorary guest, Kimberly Rice Ogletree. She is just, again, both of my guests today have been phenomenal. I have had the opportunity to be in their company on several occasions. Kimberly and I have just kind of, we ran into each other, realized we were in the same circles, became part of a mastermind group, and I just love what she stands for. I love what she does. And so she is our honorary guest today as we do a special segment to close out Women's History Month because, to me, being a woman who is creating history, experiencing what we have for the future is what she stands for because she works with our youth. Now, I've been saying this all month that we have to make sure that we are doing the work for our future, that we're creating a legacy as we explore the past to create a future. And so Kimberly um, has a lot to share with us. We're going to talk mainly about her recent diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, also known as MS, but I also want her to share her vision, how she became passionate about working with our teenagers, our young girls. She just had her um, heart, um, heart-to-heart retreat, um, mother-daughter conference. I was um, so grateful and um, fortunate to participate in that in 2011, and I just had my T-shirt on yesterday. It's so funny. I had my T-shirt on. Uh, where I was a presenter in that, and it was very eye-opening. Let me just tell you, those ladies are so full of energy, (laughs) and they will tell you what they feel that they need or whether they feel like what you've given them is useful to can help them to excel in, in every area of their life. So I just love it. It really kind of, as I was beginning my um, business and really kind of trying to see, you know, how I can help young girls learn about their health and wellness. It was a great opportunity for me to, you know, have a, uh, um, what is it that I'm trying to say, a um, opportunity or a workshop. It was just the environment was different. It wasn't like I was in a classroom with them. It was more or less like they kind of let their hair down. And Kimberly is such a great mentor that they felt comfortable doing that. So just to edify her, she is an extraordinary mentor to teenagers and young adult women in her community and around the world. She's affectionately known as a self-esteem edu- educator. She has a God-given passion for youth and the success of women overall. Kimberly is determined to use her gifts and talents to make an impact on current and future generations by helping them to build and maintain a healthy level of self-esteem. That's what I should have just read, that right there, that healthy level of self-esteem, because that's what it was I was looking for when I went to talk with those um, young ladies uh, at the um, Heart to Heart. Kimberly, without further delay, come on and join us on the show, because what I just read is the reason why I have you on today's show, because you are looking really to make an impact on our current and future generations, which is why you're the honorary guest for today for our Women's History Month. So how are you, Miss Kimberly? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for That's having good. me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. And this this was just something that I know we had talked a while ago when you had um you know, talked about having MS and not only, you know, again being in the healthcare industry it's not something that's new to me, but it's different when you know the person personally. So for me, it was a different level of um, encouragement that I provided to you around this. And then to see the way in which you responded was even more so um, uplifting and more of an encouragement to anyone out there who may be recently diagnosed with um, MS or living with MS. I mean, and it just seems as though this particular illness is um, gaining traction, I want to say, or either Mm -hmm. we're doing a better job of diagnosing it. Because just this past week alone, I had one gentleman who was 22 years old who was diagnosed 
that I um, was referred to as a consult. And then there was another young lady who was in her early 30s. I don't remember her exact age, but I remember his age because he's the same age as my daughter. And he has the aggressive form of um, MS. And so the medications that they're putting him on really is just for comfort because it will not stop the progression of the disease. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to share with us the initial diagnosis because I think the way in which you preface it and share your story is amazing. And then I want you to then go right into what you're doing now to be sort of a face for the person who does not look like they have MS, like your um, triumph and your journey. Okay. Um, well, as you know, you know, just from following my face, because I've been pretty verbal about uh, my diagnosis, it really came out of nowhere for me. So, you know, I'm pretty active and have been pretty healthy all my life. So when I just woke up one morning and the entire left side of my body from my shoulder all the way down to my toes was numb, I thought, what is going on? You know, but I didn't really know um, what to think of it and kind of just brushed it off thinking, you know, did I just sleep wrong? Do I have a pinched nerve somewhere or something? Um, You know, so I just got up and and went on about my day uh, feeling numb, just thinking it would correct itself at some point, not knowing what it was um, because I had a busy day that day. And as the day went on, I realized that, you know, I was still numb. So using it and saying, you know, well, if it doesn't clear up by this time, then I'll, you know, figure out what's going on. Um, Went to sleep that night, woke up the next morning, which was a Sunday morning, and I said, well, you know, if I go to church and by the time I get out, it doesn't feel any different, then maybe I'll go get checked out. Because I thought, you know, it'd be kind of bad if I was having a stroke or something and was just kind of brushing this off. So I got out of church, and um, I was still numb. But then I said, you know, while I need to go home and fix dinner for my family, and if I still don't feel any better, then I'll go to the hospital. So that's what happened. I went home cooked, didn't feel any better, and ended up, you know, driving myself to the hospital. And, um, you know, they did tons of tests. I ended up spending eight hours at the hospital um, them taking, you know, blood work and x-rays and all kinds of things only to leave with, you know, no answers and them telling me to go see a neurologist. Um, so I, you know, made an appointment to see a neurologist. I think it was about four days later that I got the appointment. And um, when I went to see her and was going through my symptoms and everything, she said, you know, well, I want to send you for an MRI and some blood work because I want to rule out MS. But I thought, MS? That's not really something I had ever paid attention to. The only person I really what? knew from hearing about with MS was uh, Montel Williams. <laughs> yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. I Absolutely. just didn't hear about it as a disease in you know what I thought you know in the African African American uh, community. Didn't know a lot about it. So you know, I, I did a little bit of research and you know tried to figure out you know what is this thing. She's saying I might have, and I thought, you know, that can't be. And uh, so I ended up going to uh, get the MRIs done, and I'm telling you there was like, I think I had maybe eight MRIs done when it was all said and done, you know, going to, yeah, going to get the blood work done and everything. And it was just a grueling process just to get to the diagnosis. Um but the final test that I had done was the lumbar puncture, um, which is pretty mm-hmm. much like a mm-hmm. dural. For, for those of us who've had babies, it's like, you know, you don't mind getting something like that done when it's going to take away the pain of, of having a child. But anything else, you don't want to have it. But anyway, um, so I went and had that done. And, and then I flew off to Atlanta because I had a speaking engagement. And um, when I came back, that is when, I, after a couple of weeks, was able to get the diagnosis, and she said, you know, you do have MS. And I thought, wow, Um, okay, where did this come from? Oh, my gosh. You know, but it 
it, I wasn't devastated, you know, per se, by the news, and I guess it was because of all the testing I had done, and she said up front that that's what they were trying to rule out. So I had kind of, you know, my mentality was, okay, so let me see what this is about, and, you know, if I should have it, then I guess we'll take it from there. Um, you know, so so when she, you know, did say that that was it, I thought, okay, what's the next step? You know, so I went back in and, right. you know, we talked about medications and all those things and, and what would be best, and I wasn't trying to hear injections and all that kind of stuff. You need to give me something I can take orally. Um, right, right. Found that. But it was just, it was just really um, eye-opening because what I realized was this wasn't something that just happened. You know, when I began mm-hmm. to look back on things that I had experienced in the past year or so, um, things like um, trembling in my hand that was, like, not, not explainable, just for no reason, my hand would tremble, my right hand would tremble, and, and I couldn't stop it. And so when I, find, when I went to see a doctor about that, you know, prior to this diagnosis, it was, you know, well, maybe you have carpal tunnel, um, you know, we got a hand brace because it was it was a little bit painful and, you know, but now they say hindsight is twenty twenty. you know, I know that, mm-hmm. that that was one of the symptoms of MS. And, you know, then there was a period of time when I couldn't even lift up a pan off of the stove, you know, to like drain noodles mm-hmm. or something. I couldn't lift a pen if it had something in it. I didn't know what was going on. I thought, you know, the same thing. Maybe it's this carpal tunnel thing. But now I know that it was attributed to the MS. So Absolutely. You know, and, you know, that brings up a, yeah, that brings up a um, another point. And there's a couple of things that I want to just talk about just during that time frame of your diagnosis. Number mm-hmm. one, kudos to your doctor for even thinking to test for MS because oftentimes, again, as I said before, it's not diagnosed as quickly. You typically have Mm -hmm. to go through a couple of different um, little issues before all the pieces of the puzzle are put together and then somebody geniusly says, oh, let's test for MS. So kudos to your physician or the physician who did your examination to Mm -hmm. even think to test you for MS. That's number one. Secondly, you talked about the various tests that had to be done, like you had to have several different MRIs. Then finally, the lumbar puncture, which generally is like the the determining factor, so it's the one that kind of solidifies what they can and can't see on the MRI. It's not quite clear. Mm-hmm. It could kind of be this. We're not sure of that. Um, and then the neurology consult, which will oftentimes be, again, the second solidifier to actually say yes you are presenting with symptoms of, um, you know, MS. So, again, all of those things really worked in your favor, if that's a a great way to put that. But, you know, as far as your diagnosis is concerned, the other great point that I want to make for, you know, everyone that's out there listening is the fact that, and I always say this when I'm talking to my clients, is that thing that you think might not be relevant or important to what you're experiencing right now most absolutely is. Kimberly just absolutely. stated how, you know, a couple months before that or whatever have you, she had trembling hands that she could not control. That is absolutely a sign. The fact that you didn't have enough grip or what we call dexterity or functional mobility in your extremities or your hands, that's absolutely a sign or symptom. So at that time, you're not thinking because just like Kimberly said, oh, I was tired. I did a whole lot in these last couple of days. I'm going to just get up and go to church. You know, let me just continue on. If it doesn't stop by the time I get out of church, then I'm going to go and, you know, be seen at the um, at the doctors, you know, at the hospital or what have you. So these are the negotiations that go on in our heads when we're thinking that things sometimes may not necessarily be what we call urgent versus Mm -hmm. what I want to stress is that, you know, Kimberly, you did the absolute right thing in saying to yourself that you knew your check-in with your body was this isn't right. Even Mm -hmm. if you thought for a moment that it was just a temporary um, sensation or temporary issue or was the cause of you being exhausted or having done a lot during that, that previous few days. Once you realize that that was not the case, 
absolutely, absolutely seeking medical attention is what's necessary. What I find, ladies, that we do is we extend that. We'll say, okay, well, maybe by the time I get off from work tomorrow, if it don't go away, then I'll go. (laughs) All right, well, you know what? When I leave my son's game, if my leg is still dragging or my hands are still shaking or if my this is still that, you know, I, okay, well, I guess I'll go ahead and go because I'm going to go home and cook them dinner and then, you know, get him ready for school, you know, get the house together, and then I'll go ahead and go. You do not need to set up a whole litany of things that need to be addressed before you seek medical attention. Those things, I promise you, will be there when you are done with whatever is going on with your body. You have to make certain that you are seeking medical attention sooner rather than later. And I want you to, when you do it, tell them, Kimberly, make sure that you think about everything that you know is going on or has been going on in the recent past with you because it may help the physician to identify what's currently going on. So true. And and I think um, one of the points that you made about me being diagnosed so quickly, um, I, I think, being sent to a neurologist first um, was helpful, mm-hmm. you know, um, because she knew the symptoms and, um, you know, and then after I had the MRIs, of course, the lesion uh, on my spine, you know, solidified that, that diagnosis. But I think it was that I was sent to a neurologist from the hospital. You know, they didn't say, go see your primary care. Um, they sent me to a neurologist, so she was, you know, familiar with those symptoms. So um, I'm, I was grateful for that, you know, because it could have gone Absolutely. even longer. Because, you know, like I said, I have been to my primary care for this physician in the past, and, she, you know, we start guessing about what it could be um, and not actually testing for what it could be, you know. So maybe it's right, probably, right. You, know, you know, go to the pharmacy, get a hand brace, and we'll see if it gets any better. But um, I think really going to that neurologist first was um, the key in me being diagnosed so quickly, and she's she's an excellent doctor. Mm-hmm. Well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely it is. I am a firm believer that, you know, um, having the right specialist involved early on, and so that's why I mentioned that up front, is key. And it's key in treatment. It's key in management and, of course, early diagnosis. Like you said, having the option to choose between whether you want to do injections or if you wanted to do oral, what's best mm-hmm. to keep my, you know, um, condition managed so that I can still lead an active and full life. All of that needs to be, you know, con- area, and that's what a neurologist is. Okay, right. so now we went mm-hmm. through finding out the diagnosis and, you know, how you felt about it, and then ultimately the next part of what I want you to talk about is because I said Kimley's going to share her story from diagnosis to being determined to control your destiny. And that's the part that I want you to talk about next is your determination to control your destiny after um, being diagnosed with um, MS. Yes. And like with, with anything um, in my life, I see it as an opportunity. So when I was diagnosed with this, you know, I'm I'm not the type of person to just, um, sit down and take anything, <laughs> you know, lightly. <laughs> I figure if this is something, you know, that I have, then it, it must be that God wants me to use my voice in some way to bring light to the situation, um, to bring awareness to the situation, not just to say, oh, wow, I have this, and sit around waiting to see what's going to happen next. I have a whole lot of life to live, so I can't sit back and say, you know, maybe this is going to happen, oh, oh my goodness, I'm going to end up in a wheelchair or, you know, all the negativity that surrounds this particular disease. And there's no way I'm going out like that. <laughs> so I try to, um, you know, be, be as verbal about it as I can because I, you know, in my research of this, you know, started looking at, you know, different people's videos and what have you, just trying to see, you know, what this disease entailed and, and how it was affecting different people, everyone that has it. But, um, right. mm-hmm. you know, looking at it, I thought, you know, I I just didn't see enough um, positivity, although, it's mm-hmm. you know, it's not something to be happy about. But how can we, I say kick butt with MS, <laughs> you know, um, do something yeah. about it, um, bring awareness to the situation, and figure out how to, you know, live with MS, 
you know, um, versus people saying I'm I'm going to die from this. I prefer to say, you know, figure out how we can live with this and continue on doing, you know, or having a productive life. So, um, you know, so I started to talk about it and reading those stories. I saw people's stories that said that they had MS for 14 years and nobody knew. You know, they wouldn't tell anybody. It was like a secret they wanted to keep. And I thought, oh, wow, you know, that is a heavy burden to bear because, you know, if you're yes, ripping or you have blurred vision or anything like that and, you know, people are wondering what's wrong with you and you don't want to tell anybody that you have this burden to bear. So I thought there was no way in the world that I was going to live this secret life of MS. I just didn't want to do that. Um, so I started my blog, Living Out Loud with MS, um, to just talk about my, my journey from you know, day to day, week to week, or however often I, you know, feel like posting something. But I wanted to be open and share about it. And so then, you know, the next thing I did was to sign up for the MS Walk 2015, which is coming up next month, and I'm just really excited about doing that because I've not done one of those walks before. And, um, you know, now it's it's hit home for me. So I want to do that and challenge myself to do that. And so, you know, I'm drumming up my team because I said I'm going to need somebody to pull, push, motivate. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what it's all about. Like you, Delana. But that's okay. Now, those are the two things that I was going to ask you. Is what I knew. I knew about the blog, but it's called. So, how can we follow your blog and then share it when you do blog? Um, Is it on Living Out Loud? With what's the link to that? Was it on your main site? It's www.livingoutloudwithms. Is the direct okay. link to the mm-hmm. Living Out Loud with MS. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll make sure I share that. And then um, you're getting a team together for the MS Walk uh, 2015 for next month in April. Yeah. Tell us how we can either contribute to your team monetarily mm-hmm. or brave walking in the walk. Yes. <laughs> I would love to have, you know, anyone who wants to join me. I think we're going to have a fantastic time, and it's for a great cause. But if you Google MS Walk 2015 Baltimore, it will come up. It's the okay. um, it's downtown, the power plant live is where we'll be um, beginning from. We'll start from okay. that point. And if you go to the MS Walk 2015 Baltimore, my team is MS Divas and Dudes. So M S Divas and uh-huh. Dudes. The word and is spelled out. Okay. So M S Divas and Dudes. That's my team. <laughs> so if you go to so okay. that page, team um, Kimberly. Yeah, and look us up and you can okay. either donate right from that page or um sign up to join the team. I would love to have you. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. So I'll share this and I'll also post it as well. So mm-hmm. the support Kimberly or just MS in general, to be part of her team. Even if you can't give up your time, you can give up your treasure by donating to the MS Divas and Dudes for the MS Walk 2015 in Baltimore. And then follow her blog, and that is on livingoutloudwithms.com. Kimberly, thank you so much. I mean, when I saw your video and really listened to your story, even though we had talked a little bit um, about it on, you know, just online, it was mm-hmm. very, very eye-opening not, from a personal perspective, not from a health and medical perspective. Again, as right. I said, we're I'm constantly in contact with patients that are newly diagnosed. It's different because you're coming at them from a different angle. But to actually know someone who is sharing their story who was just, you know, diagnosed with um, MS, I wanted to just shed light on this. And, um, again, as you said, it's becoming more so in the African-American community uh, mm-hmm. among both female and males, and so bringing awareness to it, letting them know that you could possibly be at risk, giving them the symptoms of what to look for, and then how to then act upon those um, symptoms if they are experiencing them. So I appreciate you. I thank you for taking time to share your journey with us here on the Total Woman Wellness Show. We'll be sharing um, information to uh, to your links and how people can follow you um, on Facebook with this journey. Thank you so much. And then we have coming up. 
You're welcome. My pleasure. We have coming up as we close out the Total Woman Wellness Show next week, Angela Wharton. She is the founder of Phoenix Ministries, and Angela is going to come and share with us all that she has coming up. She just released a new book. She has the mission of talking with women and her and empowerment around um, sexual abuse. So join us next Wednesday at 12 p.m. I say 11 a.m. Feels like I've been going strong since 11 a.m. Next Wednesday at 12 p.m. here on the Total Woman Wellness Show. Again, I am your host, Delana K. Watkins. A special thank you to Lucinda Cross of the Activate Movement and Kimberly Rice Ogletree of Elite Mentor, uh, female mentoring group, and sharing her journey as our honorary guest around Women's History Month. Thank you, and I'll see you all next week. Have a healthy week. Thank you.